Hello and welcome to this new series that is long, long overdue. I've been promising it for about three months now and I'm finally getting around to doing it because my text classification and topic modeling series is wrapping up. This series is going to focus around a very common problem in not just the digital humanities but across all disciplines and that's how to work with OCR or optical character recognition, converting an image that has text within it into raw text. This is an essential step in a lot of different tasks because as humanists, we might look at an image, see text in it, and read it as text. This is what we do. However, a computer does not see it as text. We have to convert that image into what are known as numerical arrays that can then be parsed by an OCR system to then convert that image into raw text. Why is this important? Because OCR allows for images, PDFs that are not yet searchable, to become searchable. Most times, digital humanists will use off-the-shelf software such as Adobe to actually perform OCR. But if you're like me and you work with languages that are not English or texts that are poorly formatted or might have some mistakes in there or might have been typed in the early 1930s, you're going to find problems. And this is because the Adobe OCR is not nearly as good as other free software that is out there, notably Tesseract from Google. What we're going to be using in this series is a few different libraries I'm going to go over in just a second. But that's the general state purpose of this series is to teach you how to use Python to OCR any document in any language. Now, it's important to note that this is not going to work for handwritten documents. That's going to be a different problem that I'm going to address in the future because the machine learning models that we use to solve handwriting problems are different from the machine learning models that we use to solve typed problems, at least right now in 2021. So... There is a fairly common workflow for solving an OCR problem in Python. Now, this workflow is going to be adjusted a little bit depending on the type of document that you're working with and the quality of that document. But for the most part, a workflow is a system in which you essentially pass a, a, a document through a pipeline. Think of it that way. Think of a pipe going down. A workflow will always be sequential here in this case. So this workflow, you will open up an image and to do that in Python, you'll use a library called PIL, which stands for Pillow. Now, the way in which you work with Pillow will depend largely on your version. And I'm going to go over that in a later video when I talk about each of these libraries and how to install them, because they can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Don't let that scare you off. I'm going to show you kind of the pitfalls of the installation process and how to overcome them, such as putting Tesseract in your path. All these problems will be addressed in the next video. For right now, think about the problem conceptually. Remember, it's always good to think about a programming problem as a concept first. Think about it conceptually and how you would solve it, and then start implementing those little solutions to tackle it bit by bit. So once you have an image open in Python, then comes OpenCV. OpenCV allows for you to manipulate an image. When you're trying to OCR something, you are not going to use the standard off-the-shelf image. You are going to convert it. You're going to manipulate it. You're going to extract bits of it. In a lot of cases, you're going to do things like binarize it, converting it to black and white. You might do grayscale. I'm going to cover all of that throughout this series and why you would do certain things to certain images. Essentially, this allows for the computer system to perform uh, the model, the OCR model from Tesseract, the machine learning model, to be uh, much more accurate because it's working with less data. It's not working with color. It's working with a binary black and white image. We're going to go over all of that in a few videos, actually, because that's probably one of the more uh, difficult parts of this whole process is manipulating the image correctly. Finally, once the image is manipulated in the, in the correct format for the machine learning model, you pass it to the machine learning model. Now, Tesseract is a little tricky. There's a few different parameters that you can pass to it. And those parameters are going to def, uh, result in either an amazing output of OCR or a very bad output of OCR. And I'm going to cover what the parameters are. And there's about 14 or so and when to use certain ones over other ones. I think there's about uh, 100 languages represented by Tesseract, both off the shelf and with custom things that you can download, such as the Latin OCR projects, early modern Latin. I'm going to cover all that in this video so that you can OCR a text really of any different typed script. A lot of scripts that are represented since the uh, invention of the printing press. There is even an early modern Greek OCR. So that's what we're going to cover in this video series. But the way in which you approach the problem is a little different depending on not just language, 
but the state of your document. Think about all the different varieties of a type document. We've got tables, we've got indices, we've got regular novel structure with one single body. We've got text with footnotes that you don't want footnotes. I'm going to address kind of how to solve a lot of these larger common problems in the digital humanities and when you might want to implement certain solutions over other ones. This is going to be a long series, but it's important because OCR is a complex problem that requires a broad knowledge of a lot of different libraries and a lot of different methods to solve. But once you have a command of them, and if you devote the time to it, you will have that within a month or so of these videos. Uh, you will be able to solve a wide array of OCR problems relatively easily. So a common workflow will look like this. Here we have an image of it. what is a table from World War II. We recognize this as a table, but for the computer system, this is just an image. There is no text here. It's a series of pixels of varying degrees of white and gray, which we would call the surface or the paper, and a series of pixels that are lightish gray to black, dark black, uh, that represent the text and a little bit of uh, text that is represented with a watermark or a stamp that is in red. A common way to solve this problem would be to first get rid of that watermark, which we'll go through and show you how to do in this series, extract just the table, and then start parsing that table so that it can be processed by an OCR. To do all of that, though, you need to not just open it up in Pillow, you need to manipulate the image. And you can manipulate it in Python using OpenCV. And we'll see an example here of, of a bad uh, OCR because this watermark is not removed. In the series, I'm going to show you how to remove things like watermarks so that you can kind of get around bad OCR results. If you notice, what this OpenCV has allowed for me to do is identify and extract individual rows within this table. That's how you solve a table-based problem, is you need to uh, extract individual rows, and in some cases, individual cells, and then reconstruct it. But once you do that, you're able to extract individual rows. You can save each individual row temporarily as a uh, as a temp file in your, in your temp folder, in your script directory, and then what you're able to do is pass that temp file to Tesseract, which is then able to take that and actually OCR it. And what you're not seeing here is the binarization in OpenCV of that of that uh, table. And as you can see, we've got some fairly good results with a couple expected uh, mistakes here, such as these double quotation marks, which is coming from this. And in this series, I'm going to show you how to eliminate little things like that and actually have better OCR, which I've done. So this is kind of what our result looks like. This is in German, obviously. Uh, so unbekannt is coming out correctly. Unbeland Russisch, um, abgeist. Uh, this is all looking like good output from German, and it's even able to capture our dates relatively well. 1645, 1645, and we see 30, 90, uh, 995, and we see that right here. So this is what we're able to do. And again, this is an early example. What I'm going to show you is how to have an initial output like this and then have an improved output by fine-tuning some of the parameters in OpenCV. So overall, that's going to be the, the objective of this course, is to show you all these things. And we're going to try to tackle a few different problems in a few different languages in this series. Problem number one that we're going to solve is a traditional one. You've got a text that might be a critical edition or something. This is going to be in Latin. It doesn't matter. I'm picking Latin only because it's a challenging language to work with in NLP. And it's a challenging language to work with when it comes to OCR. That's why I'm picking it for the series. It's also something that my audience is wanting to see, so I'm including it here. And I try to always be multilingual with my uh, with my videos so that people from all areas of the digital humanities can benefit. What we're going to try to do in this video, and what we're going to do, and spoiler alert, we will do this, is we're going to extract this text. But for the purpose of our video, we are only going to extract the pages that have, or the sections of each page that have the body text here and the body text here. In other words, we are going to try and reject all of this marginalia, the stuff that occurs in the margins, and we're going to try and reject all of the footnotes. And what you're going to find is that every problem for OCR is a little bit different. We're going to use some tricks, some things that are consistent in the image to actually help us. But for the most part, we're going to be trying to work with what are known as bounding boxes to capture blocks of text and eliminate small blocks of text. So that's going to be coming up in the series. We're also going to be working with, and this was a re another request, indice data. So a lot of times at the end of books, you'll have a long list of names that are in multiple columns. These multiple columns need to be solved in a very particular way in Tesseract. I'm going to show you how to do that. And by being able to OCR indices, you'll be able to generate names. 
And this is important for another task that I've had a whole series on, which is uh, a natural language processing task known as named entity recognition. This will allow you to generate quickly a list of named entities for a specific domain. Once you know how to do this, you can cultivate very large NER data sets very, very quickly. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to also work with tabular data. Now, there's a couple different ways to solve tabular data in Python. There's Tabula, a very good library. I'm going to show you how to solve it with OpenCV and Tesseract because you'll find that certain problems in Tabula cannot, or cannot be solved with Tabula because uh, certain problems do not have well-structured properly formatted tables. A lot of the times in the digital humanities, we're working with primary sources that look like this. They look like mid-century tables that were not designed in PDF format. That's why I'm tackling the problem with Tesseract in this video and not using Tabula. I'll have a whole other series on how to extract nice tables in a different uh, in a different video series. So that's going to be what we kind of solve. A couple different text-based problems uh, from a linear single column problem, such as the MGH edition that we saw a second ago, to uh, tabular problems, and to uh, multiple column problems. If you can solve both all three of these and you can solve them in multiple languages by the end of the series, mission accomplished, you'll be able to solve any problem that comes your way. You will need to look things up and learn new things because every OCR problem is a little bit different, but you will have all the tools necessary to solve any OCR problem that comes your way if it is solvable with Python. <laughs> That's going to be it for this video. I hope you're looking forward to the series on OCR. I know I've been looking forward to making it for a very long time. Uh, so that's going to be where we end now. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And if you're looking forward to the series, con consider uh, donating via Patreon, which is linked in the description down below.